When you see this video, it is probably a few days after Sowen already. But I have been feeling a little overwhelmed the past few days and even weeks. I was weighed down by my past and as Sowen was coming closer, I started to feel the need to let go of outdated thought patterns, material possessions and the need to control everything in my life. I talked about this before, but rather than cramming the Sabbaths into one to two days, I started to celebrate each Sabbath as a season for multiple days and even weeks this year. It feels so much more in alignment to embody the energies of each Sabbath as long as they resonate for me. And this year the Sowen energy began to rise in me a few days in advance. But rather than ignoring this urge to flow with the energy of the universe and our planet Earth because it was not so when yet on the calendar, I decided to fully embrace it and feel into this transformative power as it showed up. So even if this may be on my channel a few days after so when, I still invite you to feel into this energy and harvest the energy because I can still feel it and see it. Now the trees are an echo of summer. You can still see the vibrancy of summer while already receiving a glimpse into the calmness of winter ahead. Two sides of the coin that are inseparable. Leaves are falling to the ground, symbolizing the end of a cycle and the need to embrace change because change is ever present. Magical one, I'm at Hansel and Gretel's hideaway and I'm so excited. As you can see, the place is a little bit eerie, but now I understand why. And I officially found my very first fairy ring. I'm so excited. I have never seen one in real life. So the first thing I did was pay my respect to the spirits, the benevolent spirits that live here and tell them that I mean no harm. So that's what I did and now I will show you the fairy ring. It looks so magical and I'm so excited. My heart is pounding so fast, but let me show you, it's beautiful. On October the 31st in the Northern Hemisphere, so when begins. The veil between our world and the spirit realm is said to be at its thinnest until the 2nd of November. From now on the days become shorter and darkness greets us earlier. It's the end of the harvest season and as the sun sets earlier each day, we are drawn back into our homes as well. 
We are now also approaching the winter solstice. It's a time of honoring our ancestors and a time to celebrate life and death. And it is now such a transformational and powerful time of the year. Because we are invited to honor and let go of the old in order to move forward with a new strength. This year I have been feeling deeply rooted emotions and memories coming to the surface days before so when even. And the new moon in Scorpio on November the 1st brought up a lot of past experiences for me that have returned to my consciousness. And I also kept a dream journal next to my bed so I could receive and understand the messages that my subconsciousness wanted to give me with my dreams around the new moon. Alright magical one, I ventured a little bit deeper into the forest and it's starting to rain a little bit but I wanted to show you this place and I'm whispering because it just feels right to whisper here. You can probably hear the street noise but it is just so quiet, it feels like it is wrapped in cotton candy even though you can hear the street. So this place is really a weird little place. And as you saw, the trees are growing clockwise, I think, so they are twisted. And my shamanic teacher told us that when a tree is growing like that, and many trees are growing like that, you can tell that a place is energetically different and special. So this is, I think, where I am right now, like just connecting to this place. And I can see at the corner of my eyes, like something peeking out here and there. I think these places have a lot of inhabitants, seen and unseen. So it's really interesting, really, really cool. And I just wanted to show you this beautiful place. And I have never seen so much moss in one place and different kinds of moss. Like this place is so beautiful and I hope you enjoy the scenes from here. It cannot even capture the beauty of this place, but I'm trying. But yeah, I think I'm just enjoying walking on green fluffy cotton candy a little bit longer. And then I'm heading home to start my other Sowen celebrations. <laughs> Alright, so I'm back home from Hensel and Gradle's Hideaway is what I love to call it. And I don't know what it is about this place. It has this really mystical, spooky yet cozy vibe. And you know, like the grim fairy tales, they are pretty spooky. We grew up with them, but nevertheless, they are pretty spooky. And this is exactly the vibe I'm getting. Like, you know, when Hensel and Gradle are like following the breadcrumbs to the like house in the forest with the witch this is just the vibe i'm getting but it's just a beautiful place and when i want to see toadstools this is usually the place for me to go so it was a lovely morning and it has this really mystical atmosphere like it nearly feels like it's out of time and space because when you are standing inside of all the trees and like the floor is covered with moss it feels like yeah, you are packed in cotton, so it's a really magical place. But yeah, again, we are back home. And if you have been following me maybe on Instagram or on YouTube and you check the community posts, you may know that I have been in this huge process 
of decluttering and releasing and letting go. So my apartment looks like, well, all of that. It looks like releasing, it looks like letting go and like really chaos. It's just chaos. Like there are boxes everywhere with things that I'm donating. I'm cleaning every single room because it's just like I have been so drawn to releasing and shedding old parts of myself that no longer resonate with me. So yeah, I'm not really in the mood to extensively decorate for so in this year and it's just okay. Like I came to the conclusion that yes, I know these videos perform so well on YouTube, but I'm just not in the mood and I'm living my most authentic life. So I'm embracing the letting go and releasing energy that I have been feeling for a few days now at this point. So yeah, I thought after we came home, why not do an extensive crafting session? So there is one insect that I just deeply connect to so and slash Halloween and it is the moth. Like whenever I see a moth, I just wonder like, my dear little friend, do you wonder between the two realms? Like, what is your secret? I don't know what it is, but moths are just such... I don't know, mystical insects. And if you think about it, like they are always looking for light. And this is just something which goes really well with Imbolc as well, in my opinion. But this is just something that I connect deeply to Soen slash Halloween. And as I said, I have been in this really transformative energy. And this is something that I personally connect to the butterfly and the moth because they go through this huge transformation, this huge metamorphosis. So I thought, you know what, this is the perfect energy that I want to put into crafting this sewing. So I have my Hecate altar next to my regular altar. I dedicated a special place to her. And I have my beautiful birch tree stick next to the Hecate altar. And this is usually where I do a lot of ancestor work. Like for example, I put pictures there from my ancestors. And so I was like, you know what? Moths on this birch tree stick is just like perfect. Like the energy is perfect for the Hecate altar, for like the ancestor work. And this is exactly what we are going to do now. So let's craft little moth friends, shall we? My friend showed me this DIY because she thought I would love it. And she was right. All you need is pressed leaves and Lagorus ovatus, also known as bunny tail. I recommend to press your leaves only for a day so that they aren't too dry and don't break that easily. And then I just tried out the technique to make the wings of the moth and I started by cutting a leaf in half. But I did not really like the look of it so I tried to cover it and make it look more realistic with some more bunny tail. But I found a technique that works really really well and is much easier and I think it looks much cuter and I will show you in a second. Also, I just realized after a few months that I don't have to make the antennas. I can simply cut off a piece of the bunny tail like I did right here. And then I simply put the second antenna into the bunny tail and secured it with a little hot glue. I really love this DIY idea because you can get as creative as you like and your moths will be unique pieces because it really depends on the leaves that you find. So it is really really fun and I hope you can try it out too. Be careful not to burn your fingers and here I'm just giving the moth the final touches and I think this was one of my favorite ones because it just looked really, really realistic.
And after a few moths, I found the technique that I'm recommending and it's just cutting a leaf into a shape that I'm doing right here. And I found that the leaves aren't breaking that easy if you do that. And it looks really realistic after painting, which we will do in a second. And now all you need to do is paint the wings of the moth however you like. I did some research and tried to repaint a pattern from nature, but honestly you can do whatever you like. And I mean, aren't these so precious? They look so real. And yeah, now I thought while the wings of the moths are drying, I'm going to do my next Sowen celebration. So around this time of the year, I usually do some protection magic. I personally have never felt anxious around the thinner whale, but I can definitely see and feel it. So in addition to my regular protection magic, I wanted to make a pumpkin with a protective sigil. Make sure that you keep the pumpkin seeds. They are really amazing for your practice. And this pumpkin is eatable, so I make sure to keep the seeds to plant in my future garden or use them in abundance spells, for example. They are so versatile, you can even roast them and eat them. So yeah, make sure to keep them. All you need to do is wash them and then dry them. And it is so much fun. I can highly recommend. So after emptying the pumpkin from the seeds, I draw a sigil that I'm using and there is many ways how you can create your own sigil and I will share how I create mine in an upcoming video. But this sigil would dissolve over time with the pumpkin when I put it on the compost. So this would be the activation of the sigil, which I think is such in alignment with the theme of Sowen. And I also anointed the pumpkin with some oil and then put inside some chestnuts and herbs that I wanted to use in the spell, like dried rose petals and also some elderberry flower as well as lavender. And I harvested everything on my own so it has a much more powerful meaning to me. I also used some honey that I used as a gift on my altar and I thought now is the time to put it back into nature and to give it back to the spirits. So this is what I'm doing right here. Thank you. 
this year I decided to put my pumpkin outside to really represent the connection that I'm seeking in nature and kind of the desire to have a bigger garden, an abundant garden where I can grow my own fruit. So this is what this pumpkin is representing besides a protection. So I recently read that lavender is a plant that is deeply connected to the spirit realm. There is even stories that spirits were seen standing in fields of lavender. And I can imagine why that is. Lavender has such a mysterious energy to it. It is enhancing your dreams and even lucid dreams. And I have been sleeping with a little pouch of lavender in my hand every single night recently. So today I wanted to connect to the plant spirit of lavender before cutting it down for winter so it can fully grow back stronger and healthier next year, which is another theme that I am deeply connecting to Sowen. Sometimes something old has to go in order for something new to emerge. And I learned in my shamanic training that you can connect with the spirit of plants but please only do this if you know how to shamanic travel and if you have your spirit animal that can accompany you. You can also go outside and simply take a look at what plants are still growing or have remained in your area and then see what plant is calling out to you and do some research about the spiritual meaning and folklore of this plant to find out why it may have called you. And after the journey I cut down the remaining branches with gratitude and made a bouquet of lavender that I placed next to my Hecate altar as well. So now my moths were finished and dried and I decided last minute that I would make a moth garland out of them. So I glued them on fairy lights and arranged the garland on my birch tree stick that is next to my Hecate altar. So this altar to me resonated the most this Sabbath and I spent some more time with Hecate and connected with her this evening. Every single Sabbath marks the time in my calendar where I do an extensive journaling healing session. I personally heal through storytelling and writing and today was no exception. But I'm not gonna lie, the themes of the Sabbath are heavy and I only invite you to go deeper if you feel 100% safe in yourself and if you need help from a professional, please do so. So the questions that I wrote down in my journal were What is still haunting me from the past? How can I deal with this in a gentle way? And also what am I afraid of and why? How can I face this fear in a gentle way? Now I have been decluttering my basement over the past few days and weeks. I got rid of things that I have been keeping for years now. But I knew that it was nothing that was in alignment with the next part of my journey anymore. I donated six boxes of stuff, 
sold things that I no longer needed and it really felt so refreshing. I also allowed myself to sit with my regret and sadness over decisions I made in the past. And even though I knew these decisions were necessary, they were painful. So I hold myself while grieving over a life that I thought I would have but had to let go of and face these ghosts from the past. There were two more things on my so and bucket list for this year. And the first thing was to light up candles and place them in my window so that the benevolent spirits could find their way. And I also recently found these beautiful jars in the thrift store and I thought that they would be perfect to make some moon water in this transformative and powerful new moon in Scorpio on November the 1st. So to end my celebrations, I charged some water under the new moon for any future spells about transformation or releasing I would make. Alright magical one, so this is how I celebrated Samhain this year. And as you could tell, I have been doing a lot of inner work. Like I have been focusing on the reflection, on setting the intentions, on yeah, really becoming clear about what it is that I want from the upcoming years and where I want to go from here. What may still kind of block me from the past, like what is haunting me from the past and what are my fears and why and how can I face all of that in a gentle way. Also, I feel like 2024 in general has been a year with a lot of stagnation. It has been feeling like nothing is moving forward. Like that's at least my personal opinion or like impression and also the impression from the people that I talked to from my friends what they told me and let me know in the comments down below how you kind of experienced 2024 was it a year where you did the manifestations or like things actually moved forward or was it a year where you felt like nothing is like moving forward it's just like stuck energy right let me know how you experienced it. But yeah, I think I'm going to end this video right here. I really hope you enjoyed the little sew and celebration. If you did, then don't forget to do the YouTube magic. Subscribe to our community that is growing so fast. So thank you so much to every single one of you who is supporting the channel like the video share it with someone who may need to hear this also comment down below and yeah we will hang out again next week so i hope you have a good week and see you then <laughs> bye bye